You've been following, actually, EOS images. I heard your commentary. Here's the gallbladder. This is a really, really difficult case. And this is a difficult patient. She is very sick. She's obtunded and could not give consent. We had to get consent from the son. She's septic. Uh, her white count is 30,000 now. Uh, the bile duct stent, which you saw on the US, I can kind of rotate back like this. Uh, it's in the bile duct. It's not doing her. And when Andrew, who did the ERCP, injected the bile duct, there was no filling of the gallbladder, so the cystic duct was obstructed. Um, and he did try to get a wire across the cystic duct, but it was, there was no, no access to the gallbladder. So the only way we can drain her gallbladder, which we believe is the culprit, we don't have proof of that, but that would be, the, I think, the next best target to go for, and would be to drain the gallbladder and see. You can see there is material in here, which could be pus. Uh, there's certainly debris, maybe uh, the beginnings of a stone in there. You can see some shadowing on the far left side. Uh, unfortunately, the gallbladder is not that distended. Uh, it's only about three centimeters. I measured it out previously. Uh, the, uh, I usually, I will, uh, I will gauge the size of lambs to use, of axios to use, based on uh, the indication. Uh, if we wanted to do lithotripsy and actually drive a adult colon uh, a gastroscope into the gallbladder to do more complex intervention, then we'll use a 15. In this case, a 10 should be sufficient. Plus, we have a fairly uh, a limited size gallbladder. There's a big cyst, by the way, here in the liver. So please do not confuse that for the gallbladder. All right, so let's get this thing uh, drained here. So this is where hopefully we can make up for some of the, uh, the time here so we can move through our cases. And this is really the reason why I developed Axios. Uh, it's to drain the gallbladder. Uh, I certainly think it is a very attractive alternative to percutaneous drainage. Um, and this patient has been seen by our, our interventional radiologists for possible percutaneous drainage, and they agreed that they felt internal drainage would be the better option for this patient. Um, and in general, the patients who we know are going to need long-term drainage of the gallbladder that are surgical candidates, those are the ones now that are increasingly uh, re uh, undergoing internal drainage. Now, what's a little challenging here is the thickness here. I want to find the ideal window. And what's very important is to make sure there's no ascites. You can see there is ascites. And under any other circumstances, if this patient were not septic, I would be a little bit more worried about the ascites. That's a relative contraindication to doing this. The other contraindication would be vessels in the area. Uh, and I don't see any, thankfully, here with my e-flow. So I think we can use this as our window. So without, uh, we're good, you'll have the chance to see a lot of axios today. So you can see here, if you look on the device here, I'm just going to rotate it towards you. Have the camera. I think you can see. They just swapped Jeremy for a second. You'll see I have it rotated towards you. We're going to unlock here. And the first step is to advance the sheath out. What's very important is not to push against resistance. So if you're hitting up against the elevator, do not push against that. You can see already the echogenic line at the very top. I've got things maximally tipped up here. I'm going to rotate a little bit. So let's get back, switch, switch back now to the ultrasound large. So you can see I'm going to try to tent. It is only at this point that Courtney is going to attach uh, cautery uh, to, the, uh, to make the axios hot, as we say. And we're using pure cutting current. I always check myself to make sure that the settings are correct. So we'll look on our Irby to make sure we have pure cutting current and it's on an effect seven and 100 watts. Everything is good uh, because we do have a bit of a thick wall. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're, we're optimizing our cutting current here. I think we're ready to go. Um, and we're just going to have to be cognizant that when we deploy our distal flange, uh, that we deploy it in the gallbladder. So I'm going to just give a little bit of pressure here and I'm going to start to press on the, uh, the cautery now. Just give it a moment, and now it's inside. It's going to take a moment. I'm looking. I see where the tip is. I'm going to push it as far down towards the opposite wall 
as possible, and now I'm going to lock. So you can see here I've got things locked so that that catheter does not change. Now I am going to uh, take off the, uh, the safety button. Is the audio good? Good. So now I'm going to unlock. This is the gray hub here, the gray hub, all right? So I'm going to deploy the distal flange. So let's flip, go flip again to end a large, right? And we've taken the, take the cautery off always afterwards immediately. So that's something that we tell our nurses to be, because we'll forget maybe as we're doing this. So you can see the flange start to open now. Now before I go any further, I'm actually going to unlock the catheter and I'm going to push it in just a tad more because I want to make sure that that distal flange really deploys in the gallbladder. There it is. It's deploying and it's fully deployed. Now I have a retractor. So this is lumen apposition. So now I can unlock the sheath and I can pull back and, sorry, let me just unlock here and pull back and snug this up nicely against the wall of the gallbladder in apposition with um, the wall of the bowel. Now I am going to lo uh, lock again. Everything's locked. And now I'm ready. Let's make sure everything's locked here. And now I'm ready to deploy the proximal flange in the working channel of the therapeutic echoendoscope, right? This is a, uh, a therapeutic echoendoscope with large channels. I'm just pulling back on the gray hub until it, I, until it goes all the way back. And now I am ready to flip to the endoscopic image, all right? So now we're going to switch to the endoscopic view. Let's have the endo large. And I'm going to look at the endo view. I'm going to start giving gas. I'm going to make a slight rotation to the right as I'm doing this. And as I'm pulling back ever so slightly, I'm pushing out to deploy the flange here in the lumen of the bowel here. So there it is, OK? And by the way, I usually check to see whether um, I have a good position endoscopically. But in the case of this patient, I just did not have that luxury. The, what's really critical is that we deploy the, um, uh, the axials correctly. So let's take a look here. I'm going to see. I see fluid already draining out. And I'm just giving gas now so I get a better view. I'm just pulling back very slowly. Sometimes. The position will shift a little bit here. You can see that it's a little bit, it's, uh, it's um, tilted, right? So you can see it is now the, the axios. There's that lip. It's about a 2.5 millimeter lip. It gives it that strong pull-out force here. So now I can just uh, uh, pull back uh, or remove the delivery system entirely. So I'm pulling it out. You can see that the contents of the gallbladder are starting to drain out. There's bile, right? And now what I'd like to do is let's just switch over uh, to a gastroscope because uh, it's going to be easier with the echoendoscope with the oblique views and that position. We want to dilate up enough so that I could get through uh, with um, the pediatric. I want to dilate, but I'm going to dilate with the gastroscope. So while we switch now, why don't you go to the next room, present the next case, and come back to me, and I'll show you, um, and I'll show you the inside of the gallbladder with the pediatric gastroscope. That's the only scope you can insert through a 10 millimeter axios. So let's switch now. All right, I've already done uh, a vigorous gallbladder lavage here uh, through the pediatric gastroscope. I dilated to a 10 millimeter using an adult gastroscope because uh, you can't do that through the PD gastroscope. And then after dilating the uh, axios sufficiently to introduce the pediatric safely and easily, uh, uh, I'm able to look at the interior of the gallbladder. And uh, in the gallbladder, you need to be very careful that you do not over insufflate with gas. I like to use water, actually, for that very reason. And in this patient in particular, there's some stone material in this patient in, in particular, because there's ascites, the wall is probably thinned out. Um, you need to be very careful when, about over distending the gallbladder. So enough so that I can do a water exchange. You can see the, uh, the distal lip, uh, the distal flange lip there. And there's stones uh, further in. They're floating around here. 
And really today, all I'm concerned about, those little stones, by the way, they will pass on their own. I don't need to remove those. But uh, I just want to do what I call a vigorous irrigation. Uh, same principle with uh, walled off necroses. Just make sure the contents now look clean. They're not macroscopically infected. There's the gallbladder wall you can see. It actually looks reasonably healthy. So I'm happy about that. And as I pull back, you'll see the position of the Axios, the 10 millimeter with the one centimeter saddle. And it's at the apex of the bowl. There's a nice view through the Axios into the gallbladder. So we have truly extended our reach to structures outside the gastrointestinal tract very nicely. Take a quick picture here. Thank you, Courtney. She reminded me. And uh, here I'll just show you the position of the Axios because I'm very pleased where it landed. And I usually will also confirm, because you don't want your axials to deploy across the pylorus or at the pylorus. Uh, so it's going to be right here at the, uh, at the apex of the bowl. There it is, see? And I can drive very nicely on the side. And the food really should continue nicely down into the uh, second portion of the duodenum there, right? But uh, this is our drainage port to the gallbladder. It looks beautiful. So. If this patient ever needed a Whipple operation, no problem. I mean, this thing is sufficiently uh, removed from the pylorus that you could do a pyloric sparing Whipple, right? There's the bulb and it's all preserved. So hopefully this will provide the relief that this patient needs. Uh, obviously there's some concern with their liver metastases that the infection may be up in the hepatic ducts that, unfortunately, is not amenable to our treatment, and we may be getting back to our radiologist, who we do work very, very closely with. So all of this is complementary, and today uh, it should all be interdisciplinary. You can move on to the next case. Yes, yeah, there was. Yeah, I cleared it all out before. I did. Yeah, yeah, it was very murky, looked a little purulent and I cleared that all out, so that was uh, off camera. So it looked reasonably clear so that I could show you guys what it looks like, what the gallbladder looks like on the inside. So we'll see, you know, time will uh, now, really, if this was the source, if it was cholecystitis uh, and then empyema of the gallbladder, then she should have remarkable relief over the next 24 hours. So we're hoping for it.